Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Ken R. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Just real quick, going forward, if you're wondering why there's no music for my intro and outro, for whatever reason, over the past three weeks, almost every single video I upload, I get a copyright strike for a song that I've had the license to. I've been going back and forth with support now for weeks, just trying to get on their allow list that they're claiming they do not have. And even after I go through the process of disputing the claim and providing my license, there's still an interim period where my videos are not able to be monetized and it hurts the views so just easier to do without it for now shout out to bill who left a comment on the video from two days ago notifying me that that reddit user that was saying version 12.4 was unusable well turns out his cameras became uncalibrated just to double check what bill had brought to my attention it turns out that same user said update his cameras are calibrated and now back to working 12.4 is incredible my usual commute had one to two driver interventions and now down down to zero. Specifically for the incredible part, he was talking about being able to handle unclear road boundaries. The user was asked, compared to 12.3, does it still stop before a stop sign, creep forward, and then stop again and then proceed? To which he said no. Does it still fully stop at stop signs? Yes. Does it still have any hesitation for lane changes? Yes, but less than before. He also said there's a noticeable difference between chill and aggressive, which he did not see before. This is just one tester, but what he said about stopping before a stop sign and then creeping and then stopping and then going, that was a big problem for me, so that's very encouraging. And once again, Bill, thank you for bringing this to my attention. On X, Elon said 12.4.1 one releases today to Tesla employees. If that goes well, it'll be released to a limited number of external customers this weekend. There are a massive number of changes to this build. It should arguably be called V13, but we're sticking to 12. Two other versions are in earlier stages of testing, 12.5 and 12.6, which could be called version 14 and version 15. We're starting to get to the point where once known bugs are fixed, it'll take over a year of driving to get even one intervention. So there's a chance a small group of customers get 12.4.1 this weekend and then the wider release starts sometime next week. For the past few days, the sentiment around 12.4 had been fairly negative, but just a reminder of how fast things can change. Obviously, it's exciting to hear Elon talk about things like one intervention per year with future versions, but let's start with 12.4.1 and see how that goes for customers on a wide release. We also have to keep in mind there's really not a clear definition for an intervention versus a disengagement as these two often get conflated. Exhibit A, when I use FSD now, now, I hit the accelerator all the time. We're talking numerous times per each drive. So would that count as an intervention the way Elon is defining it? Hopefully some of these initial customers end up posting videos stress testing 12.4.1 as the rest of us wait our turn. Replying to Alex on X, Elon said the existing factory space, talking about Giga Texas, was already allocated to vehicle battery and cell production. This is not a matter of tucking a few computers into a corner. You need a kilowatt of power and cooling for each GPU, which would mean 12 megawatts of power and 12 megawatts of cooling. The south extension is custom built for heavy power compute and cooling. The cooling towers are huge. The initial system is 50,000 H100s plus 20,000 Tesla hardware for AI computers and massive video storage. Important to note that FSD training requires massive liquid cooled Tesla AI compute and video storage not just NVIDIA. I think this is the first time we've heard of a specific number when it comes to Tesla's custom designed hardware for not just being used in their actual vehicle fleet, but in the training compute paired with NVIDIA chips as well. It would be awesome to get a breakdown of the real world video training and simulation and the inference, AKA how the cars actually talk to the training cluster, not just that, but validation as well. And ultimately how this different hardware is allocated allocated for those different tasks. Germany's RBB24 is saying that according to the federal prosecutor's office, investigations are still underway into the anti-constitutional sabotage and joint arson that took place against Giga Berlin. They also said the police operation at the anti-Tesla demonstrations in and around Grünheide in May was the largest in the history of the country to date. Which is a good segue for Tesla only reporting 1.8 thousand sales in Germany 
in May, down 64% compared to May last year. More importantly though, year to date, Tesla sales in Germany are down 41% compared to last year. Looking at the bar charts from Roland, Tesla is now only slightly ahead of the pace they were on in 2022. And looking at the breakdown by month of the quarter, sure, Tesla may have a very strong third month of quarter two, but so far, not looking great. Looking at overall BEV sales in Germany this year, every month they've been hovering right between 10 and 13%. That's compared to quarter four of last year when they were hovering between 15 and 25%. So you can definitely see the impact of them removing the EV subsidies. Honestly though, I think as bad as the anti-EV and anti-Tesla sentiment is here in America, it's even worse in Germany. I'm hearing the media propaganda is out of control over there, so if you're not the likes of Audi, BMW, Mercedes, you're fighting an uphill battle. Zooming out though to all of Europe, Roland said Tesla achieved 119,000 sales in Europe through the first five months of the year. That's 13% lower than last year for the same time. Don't forget though, in just 63 days, we're about to find out if Tesla will release a more affordable compact vehicle with a wheel and pedals. If so, the sales numbers will definitely change once that arrives. And in that case, we just have to bridge the gap. A Chinese source is reporting that BYD's subsidiary Foodie, which in American is FinDreams, has reached a supply agreement with Tesla for its Shanghai energy storage factory in March this year, and will supply energy storage cells to Tesla in the first quarter of next year. For the Shanghai Megapack factory, CATL will be the first supplier and BYD's FinDreams will be the second. They're saying FinDreams supply share exceeds 20%, so with a 40 gigawatt hour facility, that would be about eight gigawatt hours at full production that BYD is supplying. The annual order value for this deal is about $480 million. Just very rough math, that would work out to about $60 per kilowatt hour for these LFP cells. The source said Shanghai's mega factory will mainly export units overseas, but they will also sell some in the Chinese market. Tesla's energy storage shipment market share last year was about 12%, ranking first in the world. In second was SunGrow at 10%, but as I've said before, this industry is not very transparent transparent, so just be cautious with all of those numbers for the energy storage market. There's a chance Tesla gets a much better deal than $60 per kilowatt hour, one that was just rough math, then you have exchange rates and everything else, but they said BYD gave Tesla the best price, which is close to the cost line. Just last week, we had talked about how Chinese LFP cell prices were as low as they've ever been, and Chinese battery makers charge higher prices for exported batteries, which is what Tesla's been doing for its Megapack factory in Lathrop. Now they're actually going to be building these directly in China, avoiding all of those shipping costs. And not only that, but now Tesla is reportedly going to get these cells near cost from BYD. So the margin on these Megapacks, because they'll be made and assembled in China, and a majority will be exported to the European market where they can actually charge higher prices. I'm just speculating here, but we could be talking about Megapack margins from Shanghai easily north of 30%. Not right out of the gate, but once some volume gets ramped up and the factory utilization reaches 30, 40, 50%, it's squarely in play. I told you guys AG1, the sponsor of this video, was up to something and now I can share it. They just conducted three research studies working with independent scientists and they're taking all of these learnings and they're already planning future studies. The results? 97% of participants felt more energy after just 30 days. Further, 91% of participants noticed they needed less coffee after 60 days. As I've often said, you'd be hard pressed to find something with a higher nutrient density and quality control than AG1. For June, I've set my eating window at 2 to 10 p.m. and this month I'll be breaking my fast each day with a protein rich meal and AG1. These AG1 research studies evaluated how the specific ingredients work together in one formula and as part of the process, AG1 was shown to increase healthy bacteria in the gut. 
This is noteworthy because healthy bacteria can help to break down food and promote digestive regularity. So if you'd like to give AG1 a try for yourself, you can get five travel packs and a one year supply of vitamin D3K2 at drinkag1.com slash electrified linked below, or you can use my QR code right on the screen. I'd love to see more of a focus on rooftop solar in the United States, and I think we need to look to Australia as they're setting the example. Australia leads the world in rooftop solar uptake with 3.7 million rooftops representing one third of Australian homes. Rooftop solar now outstrips the capacity being generated by large scale renewables with wind around 11.5 gigawatts and large scale solar about 9.2 gigawatts. The CEO of Smart Energy Council said even if coal fired power or deep nuclear power gets fed in at a marginal price of zero cents, it can't compete with the electricity you make in a distributed form. When you hear distributed, just think at individuals' houses. There are no transmission costs, whereas if you had a large scale solar array, that energy needs to actually be transported. Rooftop solar is now significantly cheaper than grid power. This is not driven by ideology or environmental concern. It's driven by economics. We know that Elon is anti-vehicle to grid and vehicle to home, but how much of that is because he wants to make Powerwall sales and how much of that is just not believing in the tech? Either way, listen to some of these stats. California's 1.5 million EVs can provide roughly three times as much energy as its utility scale batteries. Further, more than 90% of the 2,400 gigawatt hours of rechargeable batteries in use globally are in EVs, according to the IEA. Of course, not all customers want to use their vehicles for the grid or even for their home. They'd be worried about battery degradation and having range when they need it. However, we're still pretty early in the overall EV transition and already these numbers are quite staggering, making you feel like it is a missed opportunity of sorts. It's true there are hidden costs as many Tesla customers are finding out with the Cybertruck and PowerShare, but I think in time those problems will be worked out. Other companies like GM and Ford are also working on this technology, so hopefully in the years ahead they can continually make it better and it becomes much more prevalent than it is today. Today. On X, Kathy Wood was upset about some of the 2024 ESG scores, where we have Tesla scoring a 40 and Philip Morris scoring an 85, where higher is better. As I've said many times in the past, I, with many others, think these scores overall are a joke, but people often forget the G is for governance, so if there was a way for Tesla to score low on that, you could at least make an argument. Again, not that I would make it or not that I would agree with it, but others are out there making it. It's the whole Tesla's board is not independent argument. But if you actually go to the scores from the Forbes 2024 net zero list leaders, Philip Morris was indeed ranked number one, but Tesla this year was number three. That's a huge jump for Tesla because just last year, Tesla was ranked number 71 on that list. Brett Winton from ARK was making some jabs at Philip Morris saying, makes sense, killing your customers is a very cost efficient way to reduce emissions. Shots fired from ARC, but the truth is more people in the industry are slowly waking up to these ESG scores actually being a scam. AP ran a new poll in April of this year talking about EVs, but we actually got some comments from real people. Of the roughly 6,200 people surveyed, 46% said they are not too likely or not at all likely to buy an EV with their next purchase. One person said, while Cincinnati winters aren't extremely cold, the thought of getting stuck in the driveway with an EV that won't run is worrisome, and I know it would not be an issue with a plug-in hybrid. Come on, Caleb, it's not going to be a problem with a full EV either. One more to give your eyes a workout, a lady from Florida said EVs don't make any environmental sense, citing precious metals that must be mined to make batteries, including in some countries that rely on child labor or other unsafe conditions. Here are just a few quick clips from Ron Barron on CNBC this morning. I think in the next 10 years, we're probably gonna make four or five times our money again in Tesla. So, so he's created tremendous wealth for people and he was paid, uh, if this contract is enforced, which I think it should be, uh, he's paid uh, $56 billion. So it's like winning the lottery, you know, if you, and Joe was talking about before, you win the lottery, you don't tell someone, oh, I'm sorry, you won so much money, you have to give it back. I, I what would you tell a new shareholder who maybe wasn't there in 2018, how they should think about this 
Well, you're buying in right now at half the price it was three years ago. And in part, that's because of this controversy over this contract. So this is actually in your favor. And if he weren't to devote himself the way I believe he will devote himself to the company continuing, um, then you would be damaged as a new shareholder. You're buying into a company uh, where you have one of the most exceptional, maybe the most exceptional uh, you know, executive in this uh, country, in the world, uh, running your business. Do you really want to uh, not treat him properly? Uh, to show you how, in desire, how desirable it is to work there, last year Tesla had 12,000 uh, new hires. And uh, 12,000 new hires, they had 6 million applicants. <laughs> 6 million applicants for 12,000 jobs. And so think about that. The reason they have it is not because of the name Tesla, not because of cars, it's because of him. And so think about his ability to attract these great people to come to this business to grow it and run it and make changes that are benefiting the entire planet. And you want to renege on a contract on a deal you made with him? Yeah, it doesn't make Ron, sense. let me ask, you know, Tesla shareholders should have a stake in XAI too. Uh, they're going to be using the services and, uh, and, and then uh, the XAI is going to be getting benefit, of, I presume, of some sort for selling the services back to Tesla, but Tesla doesn't, Tesla's avoiding a cost that they would otherwise have to invest in chips, uh, to invest in these data centers. These data centers are three or five billion dollars now, they used to be 300 million. Uh, the biggest investment we have right now is in Tesla. Yeah, but your I, new money is going to his newer venture. If I had a chance to buy more stock in Tesla right now, I'd buy more stock in Tesla. If well, you can't, why? why, why? Well, because I have limits as far as how much and what percentages okay. I'm allowed to buy. On X, Tesla posted, congrats 4680 sale manufacturing team on building their 50 millionth battery cell at Giga Texas. It was just over one year ago that Tesla said they produced their 10 millionth 4680 cell at Giga Texas that week. I know it's not linear production, but if you take 40 million cells divided by about 12 months, that's about 3.3 million cells being built per month. Then if you divide that by the number of 4680 cells in each Cybertruck battery pack, that's a 4680 production rate over the past year of about 2,500 Cybertrucks each month. Tesla said they built their 20 millionth 4680 in October of last year. So if you take those 30 million cells built between now and then and divide that by eight months, that would be about 3.8 million cells per month. Again, dividing that by 1,344, 4680s per Cybertruck pack, about 2.8 thousand Cybertrucks per month. And for Tesla to go from 10 million produced to 20 million produced, that was four months. And now for Tesla to go from 20 million to 50 million, that was eight months. So last year it took Tesla four months between June and October to build 10 million cells. So obviously if you kept that pace steady and made the timeline eight months, that would be building 20 million cells. But in actuality, from October of last year to June of this year, Tesla built 30 million cells over eight months. The rate is certainly increasing, although it's probably not the exponential growth that many had been hoping for. It turns out Elon will be building XAI's 100,000 H100 supercomputer in Memphis. For those familiar with Tennessee, it'll be in southwest Memphis near the Mississippi River at the old Electrolux building. Earlier this month, Elon said this cluster should be online in a few months. This deal represents the largest investment by dollar amount in Memphis history. The real question becomes when will Grok be available in Tesla vehicles? Tesla stock closed the day at $175 flat, up 0.13%, while the Nasdaq was up 1.96%. It was another low volume day for Tesla as the market awaits the annual meeting, trading about 30 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. Nvidia just crossed over the $3 trillion market cap and surpassed Apple as the second biggest company in the world world by market cap. Don't forget, check out AG1 links below if you're interested. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X, links below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.